Hello, welcome to Late Night Creations. My name is Kendra. I'm really glad you're here today. This video is a part of the 5 Under 5 Challenge. I will tell you a little bit more about that later in the video. Let's go ahead and get started on these DIYs. This first DIY, I started out with a little chunk of wood from my stash. I'm just going to paint it all over it with some white chalk paint. I did one good hefty coat, front, sides, back, all the way around. This piece is about four by four. Got it all good. Good to go. Now I'm going to take some of the dark wax by DIY and I'm taking a chippy brush and just doing um, sort of a dry brush technique and I'm going to let that dry, sort of dry as much as it dries um, before I wipe it down and then I wiped it down. I didn't show that on camera but I wiped it down with a soft cloth. Now I have this little scrap of burlap that was in my stash and I'm just going to cut it to fit right inside the this block of wood and then I like to fray the edges a little bit. And so I'm measuring it out to see how big I want it and you know I don't measure and then measure my fabric or burlap. I just do it kind of willy-nilly and I just cut it and then you know sometimes it doesn't work out I mess it up and I have to start over but this one worked out great now I'm going to take this um, acrylic paint pink whatever I, I wanted to do pink and I'm gonna make a tulip I'm just kind of free handing it on here um, because it was it's an easy flower to freehand I'm just gonna make a little green stem and voila, we have a tulip. How easy. Okay, I'm just going to hot glue this down. I'm just going to do it on the top first till I get it placed. And then I'm going to put a couple little dots on the bottom. And it's going to stay nicely. Okay, then I picked up these sticker button puffy stickers from Dollar Tree. I'm using the Truffle by Waverly chalk paint. Just any kind of brown will work. Um, and I'm just putting some paint over them. I'll let it dry completely and then I'm going to take this gold. Um, it's kind of like rub and buff or it's, it's one of those antiquing gilding polish things. And I'm um, let that dry completely and then I'm going to stick these on here to make them look like tacks. I didn't have any thumb tacks. I couldn't find them. I have some somewhere. I just cannot find them. So I'm just going to use these and that worked fine. They look great. I've done this technique before and so I knew that it would work. So I'm going to put those in the corner to make it look like that that is what's holding the burlap down. I think this turned out really cute. It technically didn't cost me anything because everything was already in my stash. Like I said, this is part of the 5 Under 5 DIY Challenge hosted by Missy from Crafty Cove DIY and Emily from Farm Charm Chic. And guess what? I am your guest host this month. I'm so excited and so honored to be the guest host. So we take, uh, it's obvious, we take five items and make them for under five dollars. Be sure to check out in the description box the playlist with everybody else that's participating and their amazing videos. Now, I'm taking these two thin rounds that I got on Amazon. You can get them at Dollar Tree as well. They come out to be about the same price and I'm gluing two of them together to make it a little more substantial. And I just glued it together, held it with those little clips from Dollar Tree and let it sit about eight hours and then I took it off. Now I'm using some watered down antique wax by Waverly and just going to put a good heavy coat. It absorbed in there pretty good uh, so I used quite a bit and then I just took my soft little t-shirt rag and wiped it off and basically dried it because it was pretty wet. And then once I got it good and dry, I let it dry completely. And then I made this iron-on decal with um, HTV heat transfer vinyl on my Cricut and set this little I thought it was really cute and I'm gonna iron it on because uh, regular vinyl will not stick once you've used wax so the iron-on works really good when you do this 
and I love this decal. I love everything about it. I love the little vine. I love the flowers. I love the font. I got this on in Design Space um, in the images, and I think it is adorable. I put a little hanger on the back. I glued it down. I use a little bit of that drop cloth that I bought ages ago, and I just keep using it. It's the gift that keeps giving. You could use a little piece of ribbon, a little piece of scrap fabric, anything. I feel like it just helps secure it a little bit better and keeps that uh, ribbon from that, is that. That's not ribbon. That's twine from coming loose. Now I made a bow out of this ribbon from Dollar Tree, and they have this ribbon there all the time. I see it there all the time, and I thought the little white polka dots really looked cute with the white design on here and so cute now i have these florals that i got at walmart you can see it over on the right i'm about to start picking and poking and cutting and i'm not going to show you that i glued them in i'm showing you how i just sort of picked little pieces off and decided how i liked it and then once i got it on there how i liked it then i pulled them out and glued them in And this is how it turned out. Okay, on to DIY number three. Now, I had these blocks off of the tops of the spindles and I cut them up in little blocks. Now, if you don't have something like that, you could definitely take one of these from Dollar Tree, one of those signs, and measure them out all the same width and cut them up. And you could make it, you could make this out of something like that, or you could use one by twos. Um, I just had these, and so it was free to me because it was just trash in my shop, basically. It's the parts of the spindles that I cut off so that I can use the spindles. And so these were just those little square ends that were just laying around. And then I had this little piece it was also scrap. It's one by two and it was scrap in my shop. You could also use a little piece from Dollar Tree. Then I made these, you could use stickers, definitely use stickers for this or stencils. I made these on my Cricut and I'm just trying to figure out the spacing and I'm thinking because I mess this kind of stuff up all the time. So I laid the P where the P was gonna go since these aren't all the same size and height because I did want spring you can see the letters that I pulled out up on top I did want spring to be somewhat um, you know level so I'm just taking these three different colors of I believe this is the folk art matte paint which resembles um, what am I trying to say chalk paint then I had these in my stash for a while, but I think they have them again at Dollar Tree. It's a little tray of wooden embellishments. And so I just am using a makeup sponge to dab, dab, dab. And now I'm going to take this off, the reveal. Oh, it's so fun. And yes, those letters look great. And I love these colors for spring. I like bright colors, but for spring, I don't know. I just love this kind of pastel -y colors. Then I'm gonna take my sanding block and I'm going to distress the edges and the letters a little bit. Mostly the, ed the edges, not the letters. Just to give it a little bit of a rustic, worn look. Like maybe it's been outside a little bit. You can see that I'm getting the edges, the edges a little bit more. Same with the base. This is gonna be the base that we sit those little blocks on. Now here I'm using my little uh, table top desktop vacuum. I'm going to have that linked in the description box below. You can get that on Amazon if you want one. It is amazing. It's rechargeable, no batteries. Um, with a USB, it's great. Now I'm using the DIY clear wax to seal these all up. So, you know, if it gets dusty, you can dust it or it just gives it a nice, beautiful finish. So I'm just going to use that little piece of a old t-shirt and then I'm going to use a little wood glue a little hot glue. I'm going to glue these together 
and I'm going to sit it down so that I make sure that all the bottoms are flat so that it sits down properly. Get all of these all glued together. I think this turned out so cute. It's might be my favorite piece in this video. You see I did not paint the bottoms of these because they're going to be sitting on the base and nobody's going to see it. Not wasting my time painting that. Then I'm going to center it on the base. Mash it down. And then I'm going to glue those two little embellishments, one on each end. I probably should have used some Aline's Tacky Glue, but I used hot glue. And there it is all finished. Let me know what you think about that one. I think it might be my favorite. Okay, moving right along. DIY number four. Okay, so I cut these letters out on my Cricut on some cardstock, and I couldn't decide if I wanted to do a stencil or if I wanted to do reverse stencil. So I'm trying to decide. I'm, I'm positioning, so I decide I want to stencil the letters on. This wood plank came from the trash. It was on the side of the road. My sweet, sweet sister-in-law saw it in her neighborhood and called me and said, there's these wood planks on the side of the road. Someone in her neighborhood Facebook group said, "We ha I have this on the side of the road if anybody wants it. And she called me, do you want it? Of course I want it. So she went and picked it up. Well, my niece went and picked it up for me and they brought it to me and there were quite a few pieces of it. And so it, it's really nice little planks of wood, like weathered looking wood. And so, and they were all cut to really nice lengths already. So um, I'm just using this. Now I'm holding this paper down really tight with my fingers. And once it gets wet from the paint, it almost kind of sticks to the wood a little bit. So I'm just being really careful. And I'm using this sponge and I'm just pouncing up and down, up and down. It's a makeup sponge. Works really great. Bargain Bethany, I watched her do that years ago and I've used this technique ever since. It's great. Now you can see that the edges are not real crisp. I don't really care that they're not real crisp, but I'm showing you right there that if you want them really crisp, you could use a paint marker to go ahead and make them crisp. But because I'm gonna use a sanding block, a pretty fine grit sanding block to sand it down a little bit, um, those edges are not, it's not really gonna matter. And then I'm gonna wipe all that sand grit off. Now I have this little pit berry garland that I think is absolutely beautiful for spring. And I'm gonna wrap it around the bottom and the top of this little sign just to give it that extra little something something. And I'm going to wrap the two ends together like a twisty tie. I thought that would probably be enough, but it really, I didn't think it was. So I went ahead and put some hot glue right in the center underneath. You can see right there, I put some hot glue in. And then I made this little loop for a hanger. I'm gonna put some hot glue down. I'm gonna mash that twine into that hot glue. And then I'm gonna take my stapler. I'm gonna staple below the knot. I'm gonna staple above the knot. I don't want that hanger going anywhere. Do make sure that your staples are not thicker than your wood. And here is the finished product. Love this one. Okay, last but not least, DIY number five. I have had these in my stash because I bought them at Christmas one year on the website and I had a whole case of them. And these are some of those little wood embellishments that come in that little tray. Now I'm gonna cover the glittery side with this craft paper or it's postal paper, you know, that you wrap your packages to mail them. And I'm just gonna I'm just going to trim it off with my X-Acto knife. You can see what I'm doing here. And there I go with that vacuum. I use it all the time, guys. Okay, then I'm taking Aged Gray by Rust-Oleum. It's a chalk paint. And I'm going to give this two coats, especially the edges. The front, maybe one coat, one and a half coats. One coat plus wherever it needs a little extra. And then the sides got two coats because that black was a little more difficult. Then I'm going to dry brush a little bit of white on there just to give it a little dimension. Now I'm deciding what to do for the top where the lid would be. Normally I use a 
piece of cookie sheet, disposable cookie sheet, but I'm going to put some uh, fabric on there. And you saw my choices that I was trying to choose from, but I just love this white, shabby chic looking fabric. Um, you know, this is going to look like the jars that have the, the fabric on the lid. And so I just cut a little piece and then I'm going to put some twine around it so that will look kind of like the lid that holds the fabric down when you put fabric on your mason jars. Don't forget to subscribe. It's free. And if you hit the bell, YouTube will notify you every time I upload a new video and then you won't miss anything. Okay, so I'm just doing this really tight on there. I'm going to glue it down and then I'm going to trim off until it looks like it's a little long on the sides so I'm just going to trim it and round it up until it's the look that I want until it looks like I want it now I'm going to use these sponges again and I'm going to paint all these little wooden embellishments the color I want I'm going to hold them with a little skewer so that I don't I mean you know I don't mind getting paint all over my fingers but it was just easier to do it then with a little dauber I'm going to put a little white center in the yellow ones. Now I've placed them all on there how I think I want them. I made a little bow with some twine and that little baker's twine in green and white that I got at Dollar Tree. And then I see I wised up and I'm using the Aline's Tacky Glue. You could use wood glue, any kind of glue with a toothpick and I am, or that may be a skewer. Um, and this stuff dries really fast. So I put some down and then I decided I was going to move it and there was no moving it. It dried, you know, probably in a minute. And then I'm trying to decide where do I want to put this last little butterfly? On top? On the side? Where, where, where? Where would you have put it? Would you have put it on top of the flowers or down there where I put it? Okay, so here's a mason jar full of spring. Okay, let me know which one was your favorite. And I want to thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to leave a comment. And remember to be still and know that He is God.